What is up, YouTube? We are back in the garage once again. What else is new? Down here, if you've been watching, I did just post that Ironhead chopper project that I decided to take on that I don't really have to do, but new season's coming. I'd like to have another bike ready. I have a motor that I'm hoping should be done. It was going to go back in that Ironhead frame in the back corner there, but that thing's beat to crap. This motor that I'm building is going to be super fresh, all new. Lots of, you know, porting and things like that on that motor. I think I'm going to put all of that into the chopper frame. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll try and tag that video in this. Click back. You can see the bunch of parts that I just picked. Well, by bunch of parts, I mean I bought two frames. Then started going through the bins of parts that I had upstairs at the shop. Pulled out what I had. And this is what we're looking at now. I bought these for a buddy's bike. He didn't use them, which is fine. Harley stuff's cool. Three quarters on the bearings. Same thing on the fork covers. Spool 21 high shoulder wheel, beat to crap, went into a wall. I need the bearings out of this for the Hallcraft. I did not bring the Hallcraft back yet, so that's going to just sit there for a minute. Then we have the OG dual flange wheel, but I need some of the guts from that. I do have a brand new box right there is the brand new bearings for this wheel. Bearings, races, the whole deal, except for the spacer part. I don't know how well that's going to work on this, but I am going to run this high shoulder. I know it's super crusty, but this is all over. This will clean up. I got the new rear tire ordered because I'm going to need that to mock up and fab the fender. So lots of parts are on their way trying to get this rolling. Ideally, the goal for today, if I have time, if not, it's going to be tomorrow, is to go through this wheel and rebuild the internals of that hub provided I have the right parts. If not, I might have to cut a spacer or make a wheel spacer or put one more order in for a six, seven dollar bearing spacer on that wheel. I'm just realizing now that this one that I brought back is a dual flange. That one is not. Yeah, that one is not. So we'll see. If the spacer's too big, maybe I'll just cut it down. Who knows? So stick around. We're gonna dig into this wheel and Build up an old three-quarter axle bearing Harley wheel. Okay, I'm diving into the deep end. I don't know if any of this is actually going to work yet, but we're going to break down the inner section of this hub. So first things first, you got to pull the seal. You can use a seal puller on this too. I'm also very limited on space here. Cause Seal puller's basically got a little hook on it, so you put it in and it pries up. You can kind of use the edge of that for leverage. No, well, we're not using those again. These are super stuck. Got all of those at least. Here's the spacer we're going to need to measure out, and hopefully it'll work. Not overly optimistic on this one. This wheel, the race sits down in here. That might have to come out. And while we're at it, we'll pop this other side out too nice and easy. Okay. Now, bare wheel. Don't mind the tire. We're not using it. It's a good 16. I just, I want to run the 18 on here. So, let's grab the 18. Set this up here, and I have nothing. So I need the whole deal. Luckily, this fancy box. All right. Bought this for my buddy's sporty chopper project. Didn't end up working out. But worked out perfectly because now I get to play with all of these fun parts. So we have new races, new bearings, and multiple seal combinations. So only concern I have now is the length of this spacer that drops in between for your end play. Let me uh, open up some of these and we'll drive some races into this. Essentially, new races are going to go right into that hole with some love. And uh, the other option you got here is, ooh, this is a different size too. This might not work. That's unfortunate. 
Well, that, never mind. This project's on hold until I get some parts. I gotta measure out this hub and take some measurements and get the proper races. That's not fun. Looks like it's the same size on both. Unfortunately, this is not happening today. Okay, so, 18 wheel. This is an iron head wheel, if I remember correctly. You got your single side set up for a drum brake, which is integrated into the sprocket, which is why there's no flange on this side. They also don't have this threaded piece. However, the bearings on this is a big twin dual flange. I didn't really expect this to work as smoothly, but I do 100% have a complete 16 inch iron head wheel still sitting in the frame with the axle and the uh, swing arm on that Arlen Ness digger project that I took on. That's gonna sit forever until I get enough parts to build that one. So basically what I gotta do is run upstairs at the shop, take apart this uh, wheel, pull the axle and the wheel and the brake, which I needed to do anyway since I don't have a brake on that wheel. And I will basically take the 16 wheel, swap all of the internals from the 16 over to this one, and mount up the drum brake and all the other required parts that I have on that bike. I don't remember if it had the linkages or the arms or any of that. I have no idea about those parts yet. But that'll be a start. Uh, if I need to swap out the bearings or order new ones, that's fine. I can at least figure out what exactly that is first. These big twin races are perfect for rebuilding the 16 if I needed to. Like so. But I don't need this wheel for anything yet. So bearings and races will go back in the fancy box and sit until... How's that for a save? I'm ready to put them back together. Well, it's far from the video I wanted to make, but you can see how crusty and dirty this is. These old ones are high shouldered aluminum outer hoops. So what that means is you have the luxury of making these look as shiny as you want or as not shiny as you want. You got some zero steel wool here with some mother's aluminum polish. There. We're gonna give this a quick clean up. You could also do this without polish first to get all the road grime and gunk off. However, a little bit of elbow grease on these crappy old parts tends to go a really long way. I'm not going to do the whole wheel right now, just kind of give a quick little look at what this is going to be like after. Uh, the more you want to sit here and polish, the shinier it will get. If I wanted to take some buffing pads and things like that. That would also work really well. Lots of options for this initial stage. But let's just get some of the grease and grime and crap off of this wheel. I kind of like the holes that are drilled in it. Old race bike stuff. I mean, it's far from perfect. But We'll be okay. Quick little rough one. Uh, normally I like to use a microfiber when you go to do the final wipe on these. I have a shop rag available, so that's what I'm gonna use. This wheel is very, very, very far from perfect. But I'm gonna make a nice clean chopper all the aesthetics if some of the parts are crusty and rusty and beat up that's how I like them I don't want it to look like I just dropped my entire bank account I'm trying to build some sportster chopper project I just want to make a 
good fun rider out of parts that I've acquired over the years. It's the best way to go. The prettier your bike gets, once you turn it into that show bike, if you will, you never want to ride it. This will get ridden in the rain, this will get left outside. This will just be a good, fun bar hopper. I got big twins for long haul travel and not that I haven't done cross state trips. But look at that. Obviously I didn't go through and hit this section. This is the worst part of cleaning up wheels. But that was what? Five, six, seven, eight minutes. One side all cleaned up, dialed in. Versus of course this is the cleaner side. Well the sprocket's on the other side, so that makes sense, but original, you can see the back side of this reflecting back versus the dull section in between the spokes. That's the worst. Same thing on the spokes though. Quick little cleanup. It's just tedious. You can make it as nice or as not nice as you want. On this, I'm going to clean up the outsides of both sides, reach what I can. I'm not going to go too crazy on these, but a little bit of love, a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of getting dirty. And you end up with see if I can do a bottom one here. A little easier for you guys to see. Steel wool, metal polish, goes a really long way. One quick pass here. And there you have it. Hopefully that kind of shows up. Yeah, it does. Obviously, this is the very fast side. But if we look at this other side where I actually put a little bit of effort in, again, five minutes of time. Did not spend a ton of time. This shine that is on this wheel right now is pretty much going to be about as good as it gets for everything on the bike. I'm not doing any chrome stuff. I'm not doing any anything too wild. Stainless sissy bar probably. With a little bit of polish, but we're not going to go too crazy on that. So. I'm going to do the other side of this, get this all cleaned up. We'll come back when it's all done. the spokes. Nice even sheen across. Far from, if I rotate this over a little bit, you can catch the, uh, I don't know how much this is showing up. You can see the dirty to the clean sections. That's about all the motivation I got for this today. It's not like this is going on the bike or anything, so stay tuned. We've got more coming. And that's all I got for tonight. Unfortunately, I'm waiting on parts. I'm waiting on tools. I can't move any farther forward. Might turn this into a video. It might get separated into two separate ones, Harley wheel plus Honda stuff, or maybe I'll break all the rules and mix some Honda stuff together. Hondas and Harleys in one video? That's blasphemy. If you don't like the Honda stuff, I apologize. If you don't like the Harley stuff, I also apologize. I don't really care. I'm not a purist. I like working on bikes. All of these are enjoyable to me to some extent. I like diagnosing and figuring out what the problems are. Motors and motors and motor. Yes, you can approach it differently. It is what it is. I don't care. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one.